where I am in Choir River Christian Hospital. As Timothy said, I'm on 24-7. But tonight I'm off duty. <laughs> so no, no problems, please. I'm off duty, so I don't want to treat anybody tonight. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here and to come all the way over from Thailand. You know, there are not many good things about getting old. Father, there's a lot of you who are older than I am, and maybe you're thinking the aches and the pains, and you're slowing up, and you forget things, and sometimes you think there's not a lot that's good about getting old, is there? But there is one good thing about getting old. And that's you can look back on the past and see where things that at the time you thought, oh no, why did that happen? You can see them after 10, 15, 20 years. And with the experience of the age, see how God worked. But at the time, you couldn't see it. You were too young. And God had not yet completed the work that he was doing. Working in Kwai River, uh, now just for four years, but uh, over 20 years in Thailand, you can look back at experiences at the time you didn't understand. But later on, you can see how God worked. Although I go as a medical missionary to work uh, with patients for the time, and this afternoon I showed you some of those slides of the work that we've been doing, working with patients. I had one patient who came. He was lying in the emergency room. He couldn't move from the waist down. He was paralyzed. And he looked up into my eyes. He was thin. He was emaciated. When I went over to look at him, the smell was terrible because he was incontinent of urine and feces and uh, he traveled all the way up from Bangkok for me to see him. The problem was that he had been shot in the back 17 years earlier. He was 31 and at the age of 16 he got in a fight and he had been shot. And he came to me 17 years later and he had various treatments but uh, his family had found struggled to look after him, and he came 17 years later, lying in the bed, and said, I want to walk. But for 17 years, he'd been paralyzed and couldn't walk, and he ended up with contractures. His knees were bent up. And he said, all I want to do is be able to walk. And I said, well, I don't know if I can do that. And I said to him, we're going to have to do lots of surgery, lots of operations. He said, that's fine. I'm willing to go through that procedure. And we spent nine months in hospital, did five or six different operations on both legs, straighten them out first. There were some muscles left, little muscles here, and I moved them over so that they would work in different places. Nine months later, we got his leg straight from having been bent and fixed up. And at the time, we put him in, uh, had to put him in calipers. He had no muscles left so that he could stand up, but we got him, uh, built him some metal calipers that he was able to put on. And nine months after he'd come into hospital with five or six surgeries and a lot of pain from the surgery they had had, with crutches on either side and with wide, wide steps, he took his first step after 17 years. It was very wobbly. And even one step, the sweat was pouring down it. As he wanted, he so desperately wanted to walk. Well, we sent him home. And I didn't see him for about four years. And he came back to the hospital four years later. And he walked into my room, still with his calipers on and with his crutches and walking very, very slowly. But there he was, walking in. And I looked at him and I said, was it all worth it? Had it all been worth that effort and the pain to finally, well, walk, but not very well? And in answer to that, he pulled out three 
envelopes. And in the first envelope, there was a card. And the card said, graduate of computer science. He'd gone and done a degree, two-year course in Bangkok. Because now he could stand. And he was able to go to the university and get a college, a two-year degree. The second envelope he pulled out, and the card in that was his baptismal certificate. And he'd come to know Christ during that time that he'd been at Manor. He brought out a third envelope, and he placed it on the table. And I opened it out, and there was an invitation to his wedding. All worth it. Amen. He didn't say a word, but he gave me those three cards. And sometimes we do things in our lives, don't we? And we ask ourselves the same questions. Man, life is hard sometimes. And we face difficulties and we face struggles. And we sometimes ask ourselves, is it all worth it? And that's what age brings. You can look back sometimes and say, yes, it was hard, but it was worth it. The struggles matured us and God used us. And one of the surprising things that I found is how God sometimes surprises you in your ministry. It's not the ministry that you intend to do. I went as a medical missionary to treat and to operate on patients. So we had medical students who would come out and join us and say, we want to do a mission trip. I had this one girl. She was uh, very young, 17. She hadn't got into medical school yet, but she was about to start, and she wanted to get some experience. And she arrived at our hospital. Uh, she was only 17, young girl. Uh, and she came, her hair was dyed green. <laughs> she had contact lenses in, and they were different colors. This was a number of years ago. She came in a mini skirt that was so short it was hardly worth wearing. <laughs> and she came along. Uh, Studs were through her eyebrows and through her ears in the days when studs weren't all that proper. And I hear this medical, this young, just finished high school arrive on our doorstep in the Christian hospital. She wasn't a Christian, but she'd come to the hospital to get, what is it like in this uh, mission hospital? And she started doing rounds with us and seeing the patients, leprosy patients, AIDS patients. It turned out that in the evening she came over. I was single at the time. She came over and we started checking. It turned out that at age 11, she'd run away from home. The reason it being because her mother was an alcoholic and had psychiatric illness and would beat her when she was at home. And uh, she'd often go to school in the morning with a cap, baseball cap, pulled over her head because of the bruises on her face. And the teacher would tell her, take it off. And when she'd take it off, I said, no, put it back on. Your face is so bad. And her mother had attempted suicide multiple times. 10, 20, 30 times. So many times she'd been in and out of the hospital. And finally, this girl could not face it anymore. And she ran away from home. And her mother had said to her, one day I'm going to kill myself because of you. You're such a burden in my life. And the summer before she came to our hospital, her mother had committed suicide. But this time, she succeeded. And a month later, here was this girl totally torn apart. And she came and she said to me, my mother killed herself because of me. And she had this scar in her life. Because her mother had said, I'm going to kill myself because you're such an awful person in my life. And here she was at 17. She'd run away from home at 11. She'd gone to whatever you name it. She'd been to bars. If there was any alcohol, she'd drunk it. She'd smoked it. She had been into drugs. She had, um, had involved with the opposite sex. She was just, she'd done everything. 17. And I was 10 years older, and I didn't I know half of what she was <laughs> And she said to me, I hate my mother. 
Those are the words she used. And she'd come over at night and she'd weep for hours, two hours. And she told her story, the pain in her life, and the hurt that she had there. And we were busy treating patients, 100, 200 patients in that hospital that we were treating. We were busy and she just joined us. And we had some single missionary ladies who were in their 60s. And three or four of these ladies, one was in her early 70s, and these single ladies would just took the 17-year-old girl under their arm and would talk to her and share with her. She'd come over to me and we'd talk and we'd pray together. And at the, she was there for six weeks. And at the end, as the weeks went by, slowly she would come and her dresses were getting a little longer. <laughs> and she ripped the color out of her hair. And she, one day it was green, the next day it was purple, then it was red. And this kid was just torn apart. At the end of her six weeks, she'd been with us. And I was driving her down to the airport, two or three hour journey from our hospital there. And I said, has it all been worth it, this trip? And she said to me, you know, I came hurting and bitter. And yet, I have seen the love of Christ in that hospital. She gave her life to Christ. And she went home and she got on that plane before she said, you know, she said, the hurt, the anger, the hatred of my mother is all gone. And she gave her life to Christ and she went home. And I didn't hear of her for a number of years. Fourteen years later, there's a knock on my door. Back in Scotland, we're back home in Scotland. And she brings with her a young man. She's got married. Fine young Christian doctor. She's gone to medical school, and she's a doctor. And she comes, she said, I've just come to tell you, we're going to Africa to serve the Lord. And they went to Malawi. Uh, been serving there for a number of years. They've now adopted uh, a couple of young uh, Malawi child and brought them back. It wasn't part of my agenda. I was going to tell the time. And yet God brings into our path, crosses our path, doesn't he? And we can either see them as an irritation, a frustration, or as an opportunity. And let's not miss those opportunities. And I think it's been a wonderful evening tonight as we've heard of all the different testimonies that people are doing. And what Luke Christian Medical Mission are doing, supporting all these mission trips. We listen to Joseph there. He says... He's into all these different things. He's contacting through Facebook, things that we older folks have never done. <laughs> but he's able to contact and keep the contacts. And I'm sure that when he gets older, he'll look back and say, the Lord used me in these situations. And so don't miss those opportunities. Those moments when suddenly you think, oh, I've got better things to do. That's not on my agenda for the day, on my to-do list. And God crosses our path with somebody that he wants us to touch and to heal and bring to Christ. And we can all do that wherever we are. So I'd like to encourage us all to really support Luke Christian um, medical mission because of the wonderful things that they're doing with the young people so that they can have opportunities to look back in days to come and say, yes, God used me. wasn't expecting it. God use me and help it to use us. Thank you very much.